The announcement of the Tesla Model 2 in 2026 didn't begin like a typical automotive presentation with flashing lights or deafening electronic music. It began with silence, a heavy, dense, almost theatrical silence, as if the industry itself were holding its breath. When the giant screen lit up and revealed the compact silhouette of the new vehicle, the collective feeling was immediate. Something big was about to happen. The price displayed below, $15,900, didn't seem real. It was as if someone had torn up the industry manual and decided to write a completely new one. Right there, in that instant, the future ceased to be a promise and became a reality. The audience, made up of engineers, investors, and curious onlookers, leaned forward when the second piece of information appeared. A range of 280 miles in the standard version. That was the distance that changed everything. For years, affordable electric vehicles had suffered from mediocre range, inconsistent performance, and a lack of public confidence. But there, before everyone, was a compact car that challenged the status quo. For those who wanted more, there was the 310-mile version, still costing only $20,000. A car capable of competing with mid-sized sedans, but with the price of a basic hatchback. The industry suddenly seemed old. As Elon Musk walked across the stage, a mixture of pride and provocation was visible in his gaze. He knew that this launch wasn't just targeting consumers, but also competitors especially one specific brand, BYD. The Seagull, its entry-level model, reigned supreme in the ultra-low-cost segment at use ten seven thousand hundred dollars However, when compared side-by-side, side, the differences were clear. The Model 2 offered greater range, superior durability, and an unparalleled technological ecosystem. The Seagull was inexpensive, but the Model 2 was intelligent, integrated, and future-proof. And this difference? while subtle to some, would be devastating for other markets. Beyond the technical aspect, there was the psychological element. Consumers wanted a Tesla. They didn't just want an electric car. They wanted the symbol, the brand, the status, and the ecosystem that had accompanied the company since its first models. Owning a Tesla for $15,900 wasn't just a good deal. It was the realization of a dream for millions of people who, until then, were stuck in the used car market or with low-quality electric models. It was like offering an iPhone at the price of a regular smartphone. A direct shock to global expectations and pricing strategies. And it wasn't just the price that destabilized the competition, but what came with it. The Model 2 natively integrated Tesla's full self-driving, something no other vehicle in the world offered in that price range. It wasn't just about assisted driving. It was about a connected, intelligent, upgradable, and constantly evolving architecture. While other cars aged with each passing year, the Model 2 got better. It was a living product, fueled by software, statistics, and continuous learning. This transformed the car into something more than just mechanics. It was a platform. When discussing production, Musk highlighted a point that many analysts underestimated. Locality. The Model 2 would be produced within the United States, which reduced tariffs, eliminated logistical bottlenecks, and enabled substantial tax incentives. This detail, often overlooked, made the Seagull and other Chinese cars far less competitive. An imported car faced tariffs of up to 25% and regulatory uncertainties. A locally produced Tesla did not. This was more than industrial strategy. It was economic policy disguised as innovation. A silent yet surgical blow. The Model 2's design, revealed in detail for the first time during the event, surprised with its disciplined minimalism. There were no excesses, exaggerated lines, or gratuitous futuristic elements. It was simple, functional, almost Scandinavian in its aesthetic philosophy. The intention was clear, to reduce costs, yes, but not at the expense of Tesla's identity. Every curve, every angle, bore the brand's signature. At the same time, the resemblance to the Model Y was no coincidence, but a strategic move. Leveraging the existing platform not only reduced risks, but also accelerated the start of large-scale production. Upon entering the vehicle, the public immediately perceived the company's intention to offer a premium yet uncluttered environment. The clean dashboard, the large central screen, the simplified controls, and the intelligent use of materials made the Model 2 comfortable without being extravagant. It proved that luxury didn't have to be expensive, just well thought out. Voice commands reduced the number of buttons. The intuitive software made everything fluid. 
and the overall feeling was one of accessible modernity. It was a car that sounded cheap in price, but not in experience. Another point that drew attention was the structural robustness provided by the 50,000-ton Giga Press. The unveiling of this colossal machine impressed even the most experienced engineers. The fusion of the lower chassis into a single piece was not just a technological feat. It was an industrial revolution. It eliminated dozens of welds, reduced assembly time, improved rigidity, and increased safety. It was the kind of innovation you don't see, but you feel. For the consumer, this meant less vibration, greater comfort, and durability, never before seen in cars of this segment. Furthermore, the production capacity was almost surreal. 42 million potential units. For many, this number sounded exaggerated. For Tesla, it was simply a consequence of maximum automation and the modularity of the design. A car that was simple to assemble, with fewer parts and optimized processes, could be efficiently mass-produced. Musk wasn't just trying to launch a new model. He was trying to create the most manufactured electric car in history. For him, it was necessary. The world needed affordable EVs, and this was the answer. And then came the part that left even the most skeptical critics speechless. The performance. The Model 2 accelerated from 0 to 100 kmh in 5.6 seconds, an impressive number for an entry-level car. It delivered 300 horsepower with precision, smoothness, and almost no maintenance. Compared to other electric compacts, it seemed like a disguised sports car. And yet, it consumed only 15 kW per 100 kW. It was pure efficiency, translating into annual electricity savings and reduced environmental impact. It was as if Tesla had decided to prove that affordability and performance were not opposites. They were complementary. The choice of an asynchronous motor for the Model 2 was another point that surprised experts. In a world where many manufacturers insist on permanent magnet motors because they are more efficient, Tesla followed a different path, and with good reason. The asynchronous motor, besides being cheaper, is extremely durable. Its estimated lifespan of 300,000 tioners kilometer meant two decades of use for an average driver. This made the Model 2 not only a cheap car to buy, but also cheap to maintain. In a market where maintenance costs scare many consumers, this decision had a powerful psychological impact. Innovation extended beyond the engine, reaching the vehicle's electric heart, its 48-volt architecture. Since the 1950s, the automotive industry had insisted on the 12-volt system, an antiquated standard that no longer matched the complexity of modern vehicles. Tesla, as always, broke with tradition. The new architecture reduced wiring weight by 15%, lowering production costs and facilitating repairs. Thermal management became more efficient, electrical consumption was better distributed, and the car gained more robustness. It was a small change in appearance, but gigantic in impact. By detailing the reduced use of silicon carbide, SIC, Musk highlighted Tesla's obsession with industrial efficiency, reducing the use of such an expensive material by 75% without sacrificing performance was almost unbelievable. This allowed for strategic cost cutting, keeping the car competitive even in high demand scenarios. While many automakers struggled with tight margins, Tesla found ways to expand them without compromising quality. For industry analysts, this was one of the company's most dangerous advantages the ability to innovate where no one else was looking. In the strategic field, modularity was the key word. The Model 2 had been designed to easily adapt to various markets, from countries with advanced infrastructure to regions that were still taking their first steps in electrification. This type of global vision was not common in the industry, where each market required lengthy and costly adaptations. Tesla, however, created a nearly universal product. This meant easier exports, simplified maintenance, and more aggressive international expansion. The Model 2 wasn't made for one country. It was made for the world. On the virtual stage of the event, when the first test images began to appear, the audience realized there was something magical about that car. It was small, yes, but it conveyed a sense of solidity and confidence. It seemed like a vehicle you would buy for your family, for your work, for your daily routine a car that could last for decades without losing relevance. This perception of longevity was rare in entry-level vehicles, known for depreciating quickly. The Model 2, on the other hand, was seen as a safe bet, an emotional, technological, and financial investment. 
Musk made a point of comparing the Model 2 to Chinese compact cars, especially the BYD Seagull. Although the competitor was cheaper, its build quality and durability left something to be desired. Many markets face difficulties with parts, after-sales service, and build quality. The Model 2, on the other hand, arrived with the strength of Tesla's entire structure, superchargers, constant updates, a growing user base, and a reputation that inspired confidence. The battle was unfair. A brand with an ecosystem always wins against a brand without one. It was an implicit rule of the 21st century. When the topic of tariffs came into play, Tesla's advantage became even more evident. In the United States, imported cars faced tariffs of up to 25%, especially those coming from China. This caused the Seagull to completely lose its competitiveness when it reached Western markets. The Model 2, manufactured in the U.S., avoided these costs. This allowed Tesla to sell cheaper without sacrificing margins. It was a planned, almost surgical move that leveraged the existing legislation to its advantage. This strategy could shape the automotive landscape for years to come. The conservative design of the Model 2 generated heated discussions. Some fans expected a radical, futuristic, almost experimental aesthetic. However, Musk explained that too much boldness would compromise the main objective, accessibility. A car with extreme shapes would be more expensive to produce, more difficult to mass produce, and probably more difficult to repair. Minimalism, on the other hand, allowed for maximum efficiency. It was a silent beauty, an aesthetic that prioritized purpose over spectacle. Time would show that this choice had been wise. When the first pre-production units were seen in testing, the public reaction was immediate. Videos quickly went viral showing the car cornering, accelerating, and braking. The agility was surprising, the mechanical silence impressive, and the stability seemed to belong to cars in higher categories. Many viewers stated that it seemed impossible for such an inexpensive car to deliver so much. Comments multiplied, and anticipation for the start of sales increased explosively. Tesla had done it again, transforming a launch into a global event. The specialized media, which initially treated the Model 2 with skepticism, began to change its tone. Praiseworthy articles appeared daily, highlighting its realistic range, consistent performance, and embedded technology. In comparative analyses, the Model 2 easily defeated higher-priced rivals. Economists pointed out that the car could redefine standards for the entry-level market. Environmentalists celebrated the greater accessibility of electric mobility. And consumers finally felt part of a revolution. It was difficult to find a group that wasn't impacted. As analysts delved deeper into their technical assessments, one point stood out. The Model 2's energy efficiency. Consuming only 15 kW per 100 km, it surpassed the market average by 25%. This meant lower costs for the user and greater range with smaller, lighter batteries. It was as if Tesla had refined every aerodynamic, electronic, and mechanical detail to extract the maximum from every watt. In a sector where efficiency is synonymous with competitiveness, the Model 2 emerged as a new benchmark. It was the kind of advancement that changes standards not just numbers. Experts also highlighted the estimated annual savings, just $112 in electricity. This figure seemed almost absurd when compared to fossil fuels or even other less efficient EVs. For low-income families, this difference could mean hundreds of dollars saved over the years. In communities where every penny counts, the Model 2's proposition gained even greater weight. It ceased to be a simple means of transportation and became a tool for economic inclusion a car that truly changed lives. In the engineering lab, the acoustic demonstrations were captivating. The one-piece structure cast by Giga Press reduced vibrations to almost imperceptible levels. The car seemed to float above the asphalt, even on uneven surfaces. In entry-level vehicles, interior noise had always been seen as an inevitable evil, but the Model 2 broke that logic. It offered silence, firmness, and a feeling of solidity reminiscent of models in much higher categories. It was a reminder that cheap didn't have to mean inferior. The engineers proudly explained how the stiffer body also increased safety. In collisions, fewer weak points meant greater protection for the interior passenger compartment. This was especially important in compact cars, where every inch counts. For safety-conscious families, this was a decisive advantage. And when preliminary tests indicated exceptional strength ratings, public confidence grew even further.
Tesla had found the balance between economy, reliability, and safety. Another area that drew attention was the simplified maintenance. Thanks to the 48V architecture and the reduction of internal parts, many repairs became more practical and cheaper. Authorized workshops could diagnose and correct problems in less time. And since much of the car was software updatable, many adjustments came automatically, at no additional cost to the owner. In a world accustomed to expensive and time-consuming servicing, the Model 2 offered unexpected relief. It was like having a vehicle that took care of itself, anticipating needs before they became real problems. The impact of the planned colossal production also had global repercussions. With the potential to manufacture up to 42 million units, Tesla became not just a car manufacturer, but a global industrial powerhouse. This volume allowed for cost dilution, guaranteed price stability, and a rapid response to demand. The highly automated factories functioned like silent armies of robots, building cars with millimeter precision. For the competition, it was like watching a new manufacturing standard emerge before their very eyes, and this standard would not be easy to achieve. As new details emerged, experts realized that the Model 2 wasn't just a product. It was a long-term strategy. It served as a gateway for millions of customers into the Tesla ecosystem. Once inside, users could migrate to more expensive models, contract additional services, upgrade their FSD, or utilize the company's exclusive infrastructure. It was a carefully constructed virtuous circle, and this platform mentality, inspired by the technology industry, gave Tesla an advantage that traditional automakers simply didn't have. In the realm of public perception, the Model 2 became a symbol of accessible modernity. On social media, it was discussed as the possible car, the vehicle that would finally bring electrification within reach of the global middle class. Memes, debates, analyses, and comparisons spread across the internet at an impressive speed. Each new photo shared generated thousands of comments. Tesla's already powerful cultural machine now reached almost organic levels. It was free advertising in its most efficient form, genuine enthusiasm. Meanwhile, major automakers watched silently, trying to react. Some accelerated projects for cheaper EVs, others cut prices on existing models. But it was too late. The psychological impact of the Model 2 had already spread. Consumers began postponing purchases, waiting for the affordable Tesla. This paralyzed part of the market and brought down sales projections for competitors. It was like throwing a stone into a calm lake and watching the waves expand to the horizon. The entire automotive sector was being pulled towards a new center of gravity. And above all, the Model 2 represented something powerful. The democratization of technology. For the first time, a modern, efficient, and technologically advanced EV was within reach of millions of people who never imagined driving a Tesla. It wasn't a distant, aspirational car. It was a real, achievable, and accessible car. The future was no longer reserved for the wealthy or the most fortunate. It was reaching the hands of workers, students, and ordinary families. It was a historic and emotional shift, a watershed moment in the collective imagination.